Hello Hair Tools users! In this episode, I'll show you how to create a scalp from scratch and add a scalp texture. I'll be using a character creator avatar for this demonstration, however, any head model will suffice. So I'm going to go ahead and export my character out of character creator as an FBX file. Target tool preset is going to be Blender. I'm going to choose just mesh, I don't want to embed my textures, and my default pose is going to be a T-pose. Go ahead and export to a location of your choice. Now we're going to go ahead and import our character or head into Blender. Go ahead and select your file and wait patiently while it loads into Blender. Before making the scalp, I like to subdivide the head so that it's easier to get my selection when selecting the vertices or faces. Make sure you go into X-ray mode and then make your selection. Once you have your selection, right click and then click on subdivide. Get as many subdivisions as necessary. Now we're ready to select our scalp. Go into edit mode, enter x-ray view, go into side view by hitting 3 on your numpad or the x on your navigation gizmo. And get out your lasso select. Select a little bit larger of an area than what you will actually be using. I like to keep some room for the hairline. If you need to add some more vertices, you can hit shift on your keyboard and then you can select additional vertices or faces. Once you have your selection and you're satisfied, hit P on your keyboard and then choose Selection. And now you have your scalp mesh. Go back into object mode and select your scalp. Find it and then you can rename it. I like to rename mine to scalp. And I also like to keep things organized, so I'm going to go ahead and drag it over into a folder I created named Scalps. You can also remove the current materials on the scalp if there are any, and add a new one. I like to rename mine and call it scalp. Now you're going to go into object mode and select your scalp. Go to object, set origin, origin to geometry. We want the scalp to sit slightly above the surface of the head. So go ahead and select your scalp and we're going to scale it up just a little bit. Now we need to define the actual scalp where the hairs are going to grow from. Go ahead and toggle your x-ray mode on. We're going back into side view by hitting 3 on your numpad. And we're going to go lasso some more vertices with the lasso select tool. Now take your time and select the vertices or faces where you want your hair to grow from. This will really vary depending on the style that you're going for. If you're making a male hairstyle, you may want to add some extra sideburns in there. Always keep in mind the hairline at the very front. We don't want it to go too far back, and we don't want it to go too far forward. Once you're satisfied with your selection, we're going to go into Vertex Groups. We're going to delete any current Vertex Groups, if any, and we're going to assign this selection to a new Vertex Group, and you can name it something of your choice. I just use Scalp. We need to add a UV to this scalp. With your scalp selected, you're going to go into the UV editor and press A on your keyboard to select the whole scalp. If you like the current UV, you can skip this step. If you want to change the UV, you're going to go to UV and unwrap. You can scale or move and rotate your UV if you like. Once you're satisfied, we now need to bring your scalp into the hair tool baking scene. First, we need to save this project to a location where you can easily find it as we're going to need to access this project in a later step. Go ahead and open a new Blender project. Navigate to the hair tool pane and click on Open Baking Scene. Go ahead and hit OK here. You're going to select all the hair particles and you're going to press Delete. 
now we have a clean baking scene to work with. In order to make sure the final bake is in line with the scalps UV, do the following. Go back to the previous project with your scalp. In object mode, select the scalp. Open the UV editor and press A on your keyboard to select the scalp. Take a snippet of the UV, making sure to get the gray background around the grid. Save this file to a location where it's easy to find, as we're going to need to access it in the next step. Go back into your baking scene. We're going to load the image we just saved in as a reference. Make sure that you're in top-down view first by hitting 7 on your keyboard. Hit Shift-A on your keyboard and go down to Image Reference. Scale the image down so that the grid is right in line with the camera with the gray border staying on the outside. Once you have your image lined up, you can deselect it by clicking off of it. Now we need to bring our scalp mesh into the scene by doing the following. Go to File, Append, look at your project you saved, and double click on it. Double click on the object file. Now you're gonna locate your scalp mesh and click on it and then click Append. I go ahead and locate my scalp and I move it into the baking folder. I also disable my armature. In object mode, click on your scalp mesh and press the period key on your numpad to zoom in on it. Go to your particle system tab, click on the plus sign to add a particle system, and we're gonna change it to hair. Now we're going to adjust the starting length. I normally go back in and change the length while we're grooming the hair. Once you're satisfied with the length, go to Vertex Groups. Under Density, choose your scalp. We're going to set our children to interpolated. We're going to go to the roughness settings and we're going to add a little bit of randomness. Don't go overboard here, otherwise you could have issues later. Next, under hair shape, we're going to keep the default settings. However, we are going to change the root diameter to 0 0.40. I normally go back through before the final bake and adjust these settings to get my desired result. Now it's time to go into particle edit mode. Click on the combing button. Make the show emitter toggle false on your scalp. You can make adjustments to the strength and the radius if you like. Before combing, go to the Tool tab. Under Options, make sure that Preserve Strand, Root, and Length are checked. Before combing, I like to go into Weight Paint mode. and I like to blur the hairline, you can also use this to make hair less dense in other areas and add length to the vertex groups if you're looking to have different parts of the scalp with longer or shorter hair. Now we can go back into particle edit mode. Now you can groom your hair until you get your desired look. You can hide your UV reference if it's getting in the way. We're going to come back to that later. I was hoping to go for a center part, but I end up changing it later. When I'm in side view, I like to go into x-ray mode so that the left and the right side are symmetrical. I decide that I want the hair to be a little bit longer, so I adjust the length. You can use the cut tool to delete any strands that go outside of the hair mesh. I also end up subdividing the hair strands. Make sure the hair is against the scalp as much as possible, otherwise you could have issues when you flatten the mesh.
Once you're satisfied, you can go back into object mode. We now need to align the flattened scalp with the UV reference image. Go to your hair tool pane, click on flatten to UV shape key. Now we wanna go into top down view by pressing seven on the numpad or Z on the navigation gizmo. Now we're gonna scale the scalp so that it's in line with the camera. We're now going to use the UV reference image that we added earlier, so go ahead and unhide that if you hit it, and you're going to line up the scalp so that it's right on top of the UV reference image. Once it's lined up, you can go ahead and hide or remove the UV image reference now. In order to take advantage of the depth map, we need to make sure that we set the z-axis to zero. I forgot this step, so I unfortunately did not get a working depth map. Make the show emitter toggle false on your scalp in the viewport display. Now we need to change out the material on the scalp. We'll be using the embedded hair tools material, F Diffuse. We can go over into cycles to see what our hair looks like. In the hair tool pane, under hair bake, set it to diffuse. Now we can adjust the color by going into the shader settings. I'm gonna use a dark brown. Now I'm going to adjust the area light. I'm going to scale it so that it covers my whole scalp mesh. And I'm also going to rotate it a bit. I like to make sure the opacity is to my liking. It looks like it's a little bit too transparent, so I'm going to thicken it up a little bit by adding some additional children. Before my final bake, I like to test the texture on my character to make sure it's what I'm going for. To do this, I make a low res version by baking out the diffuse texture with an alpha channel. For my res, I set it to 1024 and I choose the diffuse. Make sure your padding is set to zero and you have a transparent background. I like to be in object mode while rendering. Choose your folder path and then click bake. Now, in order to see what the texture looks like, I'm gonna go into character creator and apply my textures to the mesh. The color's a little bit bright, so I'm gonna go ahead and darken it. If you're not satisfied with the result, we can go back into Blender and we can make some adjustments. To do this, we're going to go back into Blender, go into Object Mode, click on your scalp, and you're going to unflatten your mesh over in the Hair Tool pane. When you unflatten your mesh, sometimes you can end up with a little bit of a strange result, as you can see in the video. Now I'm going to start combing the hair again. And I'm going to make some more adjustments to the particle hair while I have my mesh flattened. Now for the final bake, we're going to set a resolution to 4096, quality to ultra, automatic padding, solid background, I'm going to select ambient occlusion, diffuse, and normal map. You can select multiple by using Shift, Select. Bake again, and now you can add your textures right into Character Creator or the program of your choice. I make a few adjustments. I create a fake depth map by using the ambient occlusion and adding that into the blend spot. The depth map that was baked out was actually all white, so I couldn't use that. Since there isn't a roughness map, I actually create my own. I drag the diffuse texture into the roughness spot, and then I reduce the saturation to zero, I invert it, and I adjust the brightness and contrast. And that is the end of this episode. In the next episode, we'll be using Hair Tools Baking Scene to make hair textures to apply to our hair cards. I hope this video was helpful, and see you next time. Bye-bye!